And now for the Monero development segment. Hey guys, welcome to the dev report. And this week we are looking at Feather Wallet who had a or had two emergency releases recently, so they had an incident on the 28th of April and they had two emergency releases. These were the t uh, first two emergency releases in the history of Feather Wallet. So what happened is that no version of Feather Wallet was able to send uh, transactions because um, it is looking for the outputs on the blockchain and the number of uh, outputs of on the blockchain exceeded 100 million and that's uh, a sanity check failed and that's why you saw this error and I'm a software developer uh, myself and I was really impressed on how the developer has yeah, communicated and has reacted on this issue. So this is one of the best examples I have ever seen. So first he's going into the cause, what was the root cause of this error. And then he shares the response timeline. And as you can see, in the evening at 2040, a user went to the RSC channel and reported uh, the bug. And only six minutes later, the developer was able to reproduce the error. And not even one hour after this, he tagged a new release and the build process began. But it took four and a half hours uh, after uh, the report until uh, the new version was available for download. And just uh, quickly after this, another user reported that he was unable to open Feather Wallet on Tails version 5. And eight minutes later, the developer was able to reproduce this on the same operating system. So what I see here, we have a developer who is really active, who's really uh, fast and um, extremely senior like like a really senior developer or even even better than that uh, for the second emergency release it took almost seven hours and this is mostly because the build process is taking some time and the upload uh, is happening via the tor network and this can be really slow so normally um, this is called a post-mortem in software development when you have a emergency or incident and after this you are looking at what went wrong and on what can you, you improve uh, for the future. Yes, and this um, developer is uh, doing really good things like he's building on his machine, uh, taking a flash drive and, and bringing to an offline machine for signing um, the binaries and then upload them on another machine and yeah this is really nice uh, as a software developer i really like uh, how this is uh, made this is like a blog post but it's under the change log and um, yeah so make sure you update to the latest version 2.6.7 Otherwise, you won't be able to do transactions. So on the main project of Monero, there's no new release, but I saw some issues here about um, memory leaks. Oh yeah, here, the first one. It's uh, from Celster, who is managing the repos. He has noticed that uh, the Monero daemon gets out of memory when there's a lot of transactions in the TX pool with 150 inputs and two outputs and other users um, are reporting the 
same thing and I have noticed this as well because my CPU has spiked and I, I heard the fan uh, when this happened uh, a few days ago. Maybe we can improve uh, the Monero daemon even more th so it doesn't get out of memory or, or crashes. Um, I mean, if it crashes now, it would certainly certainly crash when there's 100 times more demand on the Monero Chamber. than now. So for XM Rig, the mining software, there was another release two weeks ago. I think it's only this change. I don't know what it really means, but it's always a good idea to update XM Rig to the latest version. So Haveno had this uh, first po uh, version one release uh, three weeks ago, but it wasn't the main release on the mainnet and there was no new release in between, but we are seeing there's always lots of activity. So under the Monero project organization, there's this project Meta and here's a discussion and uh, this user is asking for a general fund transparency report because uh, the last one was more than a year ago and binary fate said he will prepare one and pub publish it soon so then we know how much money is in the general fund and how many donations came in and what was uh, taken out of it so this project test shop from Lighters, he's building a decentralized peer-to-pool marketplace for Monero. And now I have seen that he has added some screenshots. I wanted to share those with you. Here you can see the wallet creation. I think the UI looks really good. It's very simple and clean and it has uh, the Monero colors and I'll just show you here some screenshots so you get an impression on how this uh, marketplace can look. I really like um, that you can see the fiat currency here. And yeah, it looks just like a normal market. I think it's a really good and modern user ex ex interface. And I think this project uh, really looks like it's um, advanced already. There are so many uh, views already. And as you can see here, something is uh, built on where, where you can vote on vendors. So you can build up trust here. And uh, you can send messages. And I think the messages are encrypted as well. So we might uh, one day run this project and check it out on Monerotopia. So the Monero library for C++ had an update as well. It's always Woodser who is uh, a really great developer. He's developing Haveno, Monero TypeScript library, Java library, C++ library. I, I really like Woodser. He's a great guy. So for Tari, uh, the last dev report, I told you that um, the mainnet release is to be expected to be soon. And as you can see, two weeks ago, there was the eighth uh, version of the release candidate and there was only one bug fix. And as a, a software developer, I can tell you when something is going in the eighth uh, round of release candidate, you can expect the main release really soon. So the next uh, developer is Ragnium. He is a member of the Monero Research Lab and he has uh, a new project here, which is an R package for the analysis of the peer-to-peer -peer network of Monero. Um, R is a, uh, is this is not Rust, this is not a Rust package, it's an R package. R is a, like a programming language for data analysis or something like that. I don't know what this packet, uh, package does. I think it will look on how many peers are connected to your node, how many um, IPv4, IPv6, onion addresses, 
how long are the connections, how reliable are the connections and from what uh, destinations are those addresses. Maybe it's uh, like this, um, at least I think uh, this could be this. And then um, Luke Parker also has a new repository where he has a document um, which is the specification of full chain membership proofs plus plus and I wasn't sure what this plus plus means so um, plus plus stands for full chain membership proofs plus spend authorization plus linkability so this document um, defines on how the protocol or at least a part of the protocol like the uh, the membership proofs that um, replace the ring signatures will uh, look like and you can take this and turn it into code from any programming language you want so this is on how it should be done and after this we can implement the code yeah and um, this wallet the monero subscriptions wallet there's still no release but i'm seeing um, always some good progress of this wallet so really nice so this was the dev report for this week thank you all for listening and see you guys next time